Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, my focus for today is actually about last mile delivery. So if you think of levels of coolness, um, I'm at the bottom rung of this whole thing. Um, so logistics, when I, I remember when I joined um, Amazon, after I did my MBA in the US, and I was very excited I'd got a role in Amazon, I was going to join their transportation department, and then I called back you know, my parents in India and I told them I got this role. Um, their first reaction was transportation, that's trucks and drivers. Why did you have to do your MBA and you know, go to the US to join and do that? Um, and I don't think much has changed from a perception of logistics even to date. I think even now, you know, the opinion about logistics and last mile delivery is still that it's rather uncool. Um, and now when I'm part of Singapore Post, it's last mile delivery and for a postal company, it seems even less cooler. Uh, but it's not true at all because if you look at all of the innovations that are happening in e-commerce, um, last mile delivery is actually a very exciting space. And for a few reasons. One reason being that it's, um, you know, the one touch point, physical touch point in the entire e-commerce transaction. Everything is, you know, digital, everything is virtual, but it's the one point where you actually have a physical contact with your end customer. And that's in, you know, the last mile delivery. Two, it's where the money is. Um, you know, 30 to 35% of your cost is in your last mile delivery. So there's a lot of opportunity to make revenue and to reduce cost. Um, and so it's a very exciting space from that angle. And thirdly, there's so much gap still that needs to be met, there's so much innovation that's possible. So if at all, I think at the end of this, you know, um, my talk today, if you can take away one thing, uh, please take away that last mile delivery is actually a pretty cool space to work in, um, and that there's a lot of innovation happening there. Um, what is the general philosophy now, you know, with last mile, like what's the dream? What is everybody trying to get to? Is that they need to get it faster, they need to get it good, and they need to get it cheaper, right? Faster, I think that's straightforward. Um, cheaper, that's straightforward. And what does good mean? Good means that, you know, you have, you meet your delivery promises, you meet them on time, you give the customers the flexibility, you know, of scheduling a delivery, the location of the delivery. So basically, the good is tied to the convenience that the end customer gets because of your delivery service. So if you are planning um, a business model around last mile, these three categories is what you need to focus on. It has to be fast, it has to be cheap, and it has to be good. Um, and that's why it's still a dream, because you can get one or two of them, but getting all three of them together, that's the challenge that you have to try and solve. Um, I was you know, reading an interview that Bezos gave, and you know, when you're trying to design this model, wherever in logistics, wherever in supply chain, or generally in a business, he said, don't plan your um, business, don't plan your investment on what you expect might change. So don't imagine that tomorrow everything would go digital, or that it will be virtual, or that people will download Kindle content. Um, his theory is, plan your business model and your investment on what you know will never change. So for example, it will never change that customers want something faster. It will never change that customers want something cheaper. Like you can't see a time when a customer might say, I want to pay more for something, or I don't mind waiting longer for something. So the whole idea is that try and base your model, try and base your idea, try and base your investment on things you know that will never change. Um, and those are that the customer wants it to be easier for themselves, they want it to be as fast as they can get it, and they want to be able to pay as much closer to zero as possible to get that kind of service. Uh, what we do know about e-commerce is that, you know, what is true yesterday is not true today, and what's true today is not true tomorrow. Um, and basically, what we used to think as differentiators are no longer differentiators. So before, you know, offering a same-day delivery, you differentiated yourself in the market. Not anymore, because same-day delivery has become a norm. You know, returns within 14 days, no questions asked, has become a norm. Uh, being able to offer customers flexibility in where they'll accept the delivery, when they'll accept the delivery has become a norm. So all of these have become sort of the standard processes, which means that first of all you have to invest to reach the standard, and then uh, once you reach the standard, now you have to differentiate. Um, and then that is where the tricky part comes, right? Like how do you differentiate, what do you do? And one of the things I meet a lot of uh, small to medium sized businesses um, when working in Singapore Post, and one of the things that I tell people is that 
don't try and over engineer everything because you have to decide what is right for your business um if i was wanting to go out tonight for dinner and i wanted to buy a particular dress it's an impulse purchase and i want it to be delivered to me in the next 2 hours but if i was buying kitchen supplies uh, for the entire month i probably would be willing to wait for it until this weekend when i'm actually there at home to collect it so there's a difference in what you're selling uh, to which customer you're selling and what is the intention behind their purchase um and all of that is possible for you to design it and construct it that way and do the right thing for your business if you have the data so i cannot stress the importance um that in all of logistics in all of this optimization and what everybody talks about data is the key um collect as much data as you can about your entire customer experience customer journey about your partners how well they are performing uh, whether it be your delivery partners whether it be your warehouse partners analyze this data and then build your brand build your messaging build your differentiator around those pieces um otherwise i feel that most people are now offering um aggressive deliveries flexibility they want to offer the world to their end customers and that's a good idea but it's not sustainable and you know and you'll realize to your surprise your customer might actually not even want it um and so you over engineered and spent all of this money and it wasn't even necessary so um i think at the core of everything is data and more data so please collect it uh, please analyze it uh, and there are enough tools now in the world that you don't have to engineer it um so you can actually go and get these tools and then use them but i think that will be the crux of how you design to solve this problem um transparency i think uh, one of the first lessons that i learned my first project i actually did in amazon was a project where we actually were going to display the landed cost of an international shipment to the end customer so before that you know customers would place an order uh, it would get to them you know in europe or in asia uh, all the way from the us they would have been waiting for it it gets to the door and then they are tagged with a bill um, which has all of the duties taxes and fees and customers were so shocked by the amount that they saw that many times they would just return it um and or they would refuse the shipment and then amazon would have to bear the cost um and so from the very beginning i think the whole idea was be as upfront as possible be as transparent as possible about the total cost that your end customer will be paying and this is especially true in southeast asia where no one single market is big enough from an e-commerce standpoint so everything will eventually become cross border and in cross border the biggest cost is at times for different countries will be the duties taxes and fees so it's not just about advertising free shipping or that you know shipping threshold over certain dollars is going to be free but also think of all the other costs that eventually leads up to the total landed cost that a customer needs to pay when they actually receive this package speed um i don't think we have to stress the importance of speed um like i said you know make sure that you're able to offer the most competitive service in the market for your product category for your type of customer um there are a lot of innovations that are happening in this space because i think first the idea was you go and get it to the customer um and then you try and deliver it you know faster and faster um and one of the benchmarks is you know that many companies use is if i was a customer and i can actually go to a store and pick up that item and that takes me x hours to do i should be able to match that same x hours if i was an e-commerce company so basically you normalize that experience to the end customer that whether they went to the store and bought it or they bought it online they'll receive it in the same time and i think you know that is one benchmark that many companies use um, but like i said you know make sure that it is the right experience for your company for your customer returns i think if in all of the space you know if there's one um aspect of logistics that really nobody is focused a lot on that would be reverse logistics right there's no really good solution out in the market where people you know have a very robust solution for returns one because there's a negative perception about returns um you know nobody wants to get a return package especially as a e-commerce company um you know it's it eats away a lot you know into your bottom line it's not a good customer experience um and you know generally you might have an irritated customer at the end of it so it's generally considered a negative um 
you know, part of the entire supply chain, and a lot, not much focus has been put on it at all. Um, slowly, companies are having a you know better returns policy. They want to try and you know um, use returns now also to be able to get loyal customers. So while we all agree that returns is bad, and in fact you should try and have zero returns, if at all there was a you know problem when you did have a returns um, issue. Use that to build customer loyalty. Use that to actually gain that customer trust. Um, and use returns process to do that. Um, one of the biggest, you know, at the very starting point of a customer journey, when they come to your website and they look at, you know, buying an item, one of the first things that they'll check is your returns policy. And use that first to build trust. Have a simple, easy to use, um, easy to understand returns policy. Uh, once, you know, You've determined what that policy is. When the cust you know, allow them to be able to easily contact you um, if they wanted to return an item, and then make that experience as seamless as possible. Um, data has shown that you know, if you were actually able to offer a good returns policy, your order rate goes up by about 10 to 20 percent, and your returns rate actually only increases by about one to two percent. So. While there are some countries in the world where returns can be abused, um, and you know customers might just buy and then you know return it, I also believe that it is one um, very important aspect where you can actually use it to reduce barriers for even customers purchasing an item. So, if at all there is one aspect that I believe uh, companies haven't focused on, you don't have many you know players in the market, um, is the returns process. So, do pay a lot of attention. Uh, while you design and you know set up your returns process for your companies, uh, cross-border returns, like I said, Southeast Asia, it's never going to be one country. It has to be international shipping, and forget local returns when nothing's been done. International returns is a nightmare. So in many companies, including even now, um, you know, with Singapore Post, where we do e-commerce solutions for companies. If the items were, you know, had a lower average order value, we actually don't even bother to get the return back because it's so prohibitive to get the return, you know, to get back into Singapore that we would rather just have the customer destroy it or have the carrier pick it up and destroy it and then send them a replacement. Um, you know, so if outbound shipping internationally is hard, reverse, you know, shipping back into the country is even harder. So understanding what the reverse logistics process looks like um, internationally is a very, very important. And then you decide whether you want to offer it or not, and then choose different models. One of the most popular ones that many, you know, if at all players offer it, is a consolidation model, where you know, in a given country, all of your return shipments get consolidated, and then it gets brought back as a B2B shipment. Um, and that is one possibility, but still there is a lot of uh, planning and logistics that has to go in in order to make that seamless. Um, you have to optimize the supply chain. I think you know all of us here know that. I think you know it's um, that horse has been beaten to death, and I think everybody is looking at different ways of how they can optimize the supply chain. But some innovations that you know people do think about and that they do work on, especially as they get closer and closer to the customer, is that you try and get your warehouses as close to the customer as possible. Um, you try and get um, you know, those warehouses that are closest to your customers to store inventory that you know these customers are actually purchasing. So if you know that in this particular region, um, in Indonesia, customers have higher demand for this type of shoes, then those local warehouses try and keep those fast moving goods and keep all of your long tail items, you know, in your master fulfillment center. These are all small tips, you know, and that there are enough people who are doing that. Um, but I think that as you think about it, um, one good news about Southeast Asia being behind the West in terms of e-commerce innovation is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, there are enough people who've done it, enough people who've learned from mistakes they've made that you don't have to repeat those mistakes. You don't have to go and start things from scratch. You know, and so there are, there are enough th you know, examples around the world that try and learn from them um, and use them. Don't try and build everything you know, from scratch yourself. Um, Amazon probably had to do it because at the time nobody had done it before, but there are, now there are enough partners who can support you who can actually do it for you. Um, other things in the last mile space that we're seeing a lot that's happening in Southeast Asia, which Singapore Post also does, um, is you know, use partners to help you to get to your end customer. Like I said, yes, you can keep you know, getting closer and closer to your customer. You can deliver to them as fast as possible. 
all of them come at a huge cost. So what can you do to try and you know, reduce that cost is maybe in some ways have the customer come to you. Um, and that gives them the flexibility in time, gives them the flexibility of pickup location, but also it helps you with your cost structure. So some of the popular ones are you know, what in Singapore Post we call a pop station, which is nothing but a locker where customers are sent an SMS, um, it has a code, these lockers are available in about 100 locations in Singapore. You just go in, you type the code, your package is waiting there, and you can pick it up. And these you know, lockers are available um, outside MRT stations, they're available outside convenience stores. So that's one way of getting the customer to be able to pick up that package, um, so you don't have to go all the way to the last mile. Another is, you know, convenience stores. It's, you know, use 7-Elevens, Cheers, um, and many of these, many of them are willing to be partners, um, and you can work with them to have the packages delivered there so that customers can come and pick it up from those locations. Um, so, to, you know, wrap things up, like I said, the three most important things in order uh, for you to be able to design a good last mile solution is cheaper, faster, good service. So those are three aspects, you know, keep that as the philosophy as you're designing your solution. Um, how does, you know, um, SP e-commerce come into all this is that Singapore Post, of course, yes, traditionally it's a mail company. About three years back, the company had the vision to say that, you know, mail business, of course, is a dying business. Um, and we have these warehouses, we have the delivery network. So how do we use this um, and, you know, move forward? Um, and so e-commerce became a pillar um, and it's one of the driving pillars right now in the overall SingPost vision over the next three to five years. Um, and basically the idea is that we will leverage our warehouse network, we leverage our um, delivery network and be able to fulfill for e-commerce partners. And we do this for big brands like you know Adidas and Levi's and we do this for um, small to medium-sized businesses um, through automated platforms for fulfillment. The solution is called Easy Commerce, and then we have, you know, we post for end customers like you and me to be able to get international shipping for a very cheap price. Um, so. SP e-commerce offers this, you know, end-to-end -end solutions for customers of various sizes, and we've tried to acquire companies, um, you know, in the Southeast Asia region, but also in the U.S., um, so that we can actually expand our footprint and be able to offer truly an international end-to-end e-commerce solution. So that's what SP e-commerce is, and it's a part of Singapore Post. Um, but like I said, the whole focus for us for this coming year. Um, is how do we innovate more and more in the last mile delivery space? Uh, what more can we do so we can wow our customers? And that's basically my presentation for today. Thank you for your time.